Well, good morning once again. Uh, my name is Chris Kimston. I'm the men's minister here. My name is Lindsay Cordy, and I'm the children's ministry team leader. And we are just so excited to have you here with us. Uh, we'd love to have you reach out if you have any questions about us. We know that a lot of folks are, are maybe checking out the live stream because they have some questions about this place. They wonder what we're all about. So uh, we want to answer those questions, whatever they are. We uh, have indeed been praying for you. You can find more information online, lutheranchurchofhope.org. That's right. And speaking of prayer, we believe in the power of prayer here. So we have an online prayer wall that you can check out. Leave a prayer request, pray for someone else. That's one easy and great, powerful way to get plugged in with community here at Hope. Absolutely. Now we're continuing our whole Holy Bible series in the book of Galatians today. And you're definitely going to want to jump on board with that. Lots of resources are online. That's right. And it's Communion Sunday today. So grab your communion elements. We are so glad you're here today. Welcome to Hope. To stand, whether you're here in the room with us or you're joining us online, we are so glad that you've joined us. I invite you to worship with us. We praise our amazing God. We're so excited to see how He moves in this space. Let's put our hands together and worship.
Holy Spirit, come and fall on us. Same power that rose Jesus from the grave is present in this place and moving, not because of anything we do, but because that's who God is. God that gives and loves. God that loves the sound of your voice. God that loves when you worship. He loves us, he's here with us. We were created to do this exact thing. Just be with him.
Father, we praise you. We praise you and we surrender. We surrender our lives to you. The things that we carry that are heavy, the things that we carry that are light. Jesus, thank you for the work that you did on the cross. Your Holy Spirit power lives in us. Thank you for trusting us even when we don't deserve it to be a temple space for you. God, we love you. We worship you. Thank you that you created us this way. You are kind and we find a lot of peace in your presence today. Help us see it. Help us feel it. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And together we say, amen. Go ahead and take a seat. Our Bible reading is from the New Testament, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 23. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under the obligation of the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There is no law against these things. Here ends the reading. This is Hope 360, your weekly look around Lutheran Church of Hope. Last weekend, we capped off two exciting weeks of VBS with a party in the parking lot, Taste of Hope. Thousands of Hopesters, their friends, and our neighbors in the community got a taste of what Hope has to offer through free food, games, and music, worship, and more. And the turnout and the weather were amazing. The highlight of the night was the celebration in the worship center at five as parents got a chance to see what their kids learned during VBS and how our youngest hopesters worship God. The evening was capped off with a foam party outside, a new event that kids seem to love and parents love too. Their kids have never come home from church smelling better. Students in grades six through 12 are invited to gather in the parking lot on Wednesday, August 9th at 7 p.m. for our final summer bash of the year. Join us for a night of faith, food, friends, and fun as we prepare for a new school year of Power Life and Ignition on Wednesday nights, kicking off September 13th. It's gonna be a great year, and we can't wait to have all of our students back on Wednesday nights, perhaps with a few friends in tow. Our journey as a church through the whole Holy Bible in a year has been amazing, and we want to invite you to finish the year strong by continuing, or jumping back in, to the daily readings with all of the resources that are available. Daily Bible readings continue to be available on our website, Hope's app, by subscribing to our email list or through audio recordings. Daily devotions written by Hope Pastors are also available, as well as a weekly sermon discussion guide that is great for groups. God's Story for Kids podcast also continues and is a great option for the youth in our church to stay connected. And speaking of podcasts, if you want a deeper discussion of each week's readings, you'll want to catch Pastor Mike Drop live. Join us live every Wednesday at noon for the Pastor Mike Drop podcast. Or on demand on Hope's YouTube channel or your favorite podcast platform. We're diving deep into scripture, help clarify our weekly readings as we read through the whole Holy Bible in a year. It's hard to believe the school year is creeping up on us. And as kids prepare to head back to class in a few weeks, some in our community are struggling to gather the supplies needed for school. 
But you can help by dropping off donations in West Des Moines by Sunday, August 13th as a part of Hope's Back to School Drive. The Hope community can download supply lists by scanning the QR code in the atrium or on Hope's website. These supplies will be distributed between both the West Des Moines and the Des Moines Public Schools. In addition, we will also need volunteers to sort and box up during shifts starting on August 14th. Visit our website to learn more. Another great way to give back to the community is coming up on Tuesday as Hope West Des Moines becomes a mobile blood drive location. Life Serve Blood Center will be set up in our building Tuesday afternoon and spots are available now to sign up. If you're feeling the nudge to donate, visit our website to reserve your time slot. That was your 360 degree look around Lutheran Church of Hope. We're glad you joined us and welcome to Hope. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Kimston. I'm the men's minister here. Do not worry. I am not going to sing. Uh, the, uh, we'll leave that to them in a second. But before we do that, I just wanted to uh, echo uh, the importance of the uh, announcements that you heard. Uh, you can find a lot of information about all that online. As you can tell, we have just a few things going on. But LutheranChurchOfHope.org, you can find more information there. Uh, specifically around the, the school drive, the, the school supply drive, we want to make sure that every kid going to school in central Iowa has what they need uh, to go to school. And the reality is that just isn't the case for so many people. So we as a church body want to love our kids well and set them up for success. Campuses all across uh, the Hope Network are doing that for their local schools as well. So uh, we're looking to affect a ton of different uh, young people as we do that. So thank you in advance for your faithfulness in that process. And uh, if you'd like to support the uh, endeavors of Hope uh, with a financial gift, we have uh, spots, uh, locked boxes here for uh, physical money here as well as online you can give digitally as well, uh, lutheranchurchofhope.org slash give. Uh, we are going to continue uh, with that offering, but before we do that, jo please join me in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing all of us here, God. Each and every one of us is a story walking in here, God, and we just are grateful that those stories, each and every one of them belong here. God, those parts of us that we're not proud of, those parts of us that have hurt other people, that have hurt ourselves, God, they, they all belong in this space, all of us, God. We get to bring all that to the cross. So God, we're just grateful. That whether we're a life transformed by, v, by VBS recently or maybe we haven't been around in church in a long time, God, each and every person gets to come here all the same to follow this Jesus that defeated death. So God, we're grateful for that gift. Give us eyes to see the path in front of us. Give us strong feet to walk it and help us to love each other the way that you love us. It's in your good name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. I'm no longer Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies, for that gift. And that's just a powerful truth. Man, if we just sit in that for a moment and receive that, if you, if you hear us say nothing else this morning, know that you are a child of God, that you are loved more than you will ever know. Such a powerful way to start today. Good morning, Hope. It is so good to be with you. My name is John Annenson. I'm one of the campus pastors at our Hope Elam campus, which is right across from Drake University. My name is Andy Hermanson. I was a pastor here for a number of years at the Hope West Moines campus last year. Hard to believe it's already been a year yeah. uh, up at Hope Grimes. So hello, Hope Grimes. Uh, hello, everyone. It's awesome to be back here at West Des Moines today. Yes. Uh, yes, and it's awesome to be here uh, with friends, uh, people uh, that we know and don't know together in Christ here in this room. If you are another one of our campuses, if you're at a local site, God bless you. We're glad you're with us yeah. today. If you're watching online, we're so glad you tuned in as well. It's going to be awesome. So we're going to attempt to tag team preach today. This is not WWF, but we are going to tag team preach today. And it's going to be fun because this is not the first time that Pastor Andy and I have connected. Before we were pastors, we were just John, well, we still are just John and Andy, but people say they go way back. We go way back all the way to, we grew up together in the big city of Story, Story City. City. Anybody know where Story City, Iowa is out there? Yeah. Wow. Wow. There you go. Somebody even clapped. Yes. That's awesome. 13 people know where Story <laughs> City is. That's awesome. That's great. So we grew up together there. We worked at Bible camp together. Uh, now have worked at Hope together. And uh, so, so many similarities. Yeah, of course. Uh, between us, there is one startling difference that we need to point out, and it's our VBS characters, that we were uh, very different. You see up here on the screen, uh, I'm Hula Dude over here. I, I think this is Tom Hanks. Is that? Yeah. It, Basically, I look like a homeless guy. Is well, yeah, it's, it's great. Yes. Uh, you know, anything for kids and Jesus, but uh, very different VBS costumes. But we have so much fun uh, with that as well. And we're excited to be here with you today and to kick off a brand new sermon series. A new series. We call it God's Electric Power Company, uh, which just sounds like a, a catchy term or phrase. We're going to talk about power. We're going to talk about a yes. whole bunch of things today. But also it's an acronym. If you've been doing your daily Bible readings and been going through the Old New Testament, uh, it's been an awesome adventure and we're continuing with four great books. And this is an acronym for the next four books we're going to look at. So Galatians, you got Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, all written by Paul, all yes. coming together under a common theme. Yeah, if there's a common theme as you're going through those Bible readings, as we're going through the Bible in a year as a church, you're going to find that what ties these four books together is this question is, where does the power come from yeah. to live the life that we long for? So as we go through these books, you're going to see that common theme, that God has called us to this life, but how are we able to do that? And before we dive into Galatians, we encourage you to follow along this morning. I wanted to start with a question, whether you're worshiping online or at a campus or here in the room here at Hope West Des Moines, I want to ask you this question. What do you want? And I don't say that in kind of a smug, trite way. What do you long for? What is the kind of life that you desire? Turns out Jesus asked this question on multiple occasions in the Gospels, and what Jesus is doing is he's reaching out to you this morning, and he's appealing to your heart. He's appealing to desire. 
what is it that you want? Sometimes the need was obvious, sometimes it wasn't, but that's our desire too, because Pastor Andy and I can stand up here, we can preach an entire sermon to you about the power of living in God's spirit and having the spirit-filled life. But so much of it is gonna hinge on your response to that question, what do you want? What is the life that you long for? Well, Paul gives us a great picture of this in Galatians chapter 5. And just so you know, we are not going to preach the entire book of Galatians. We'd be here (laughs) for a long time. time. Yeah, exactly. We're going to focus on Galatians chapter 5 today. And if you have your Bible, which we encourage you to bring to worship every week, or if you got your Bible app on your phone, follow along Galatians chapter 5. And Paul is giving us a picture of the good life, of the ideal life. In fact, got it up here on the screen, these verses. Let's read it nice and loud together wherever you are. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What do you want? What kind of life do you long for? I think if we had a show of hands, I think all of us would say that. Not not only do I want that, but I, I need that. That's the kind of, whether you're here this morning, you've been a lifelong follower of Jesus or you're skeptical or you're checking Christianity out and you're, you're not so sure about what you think about Jesus. And if that's you, we love it that you're here today. We love new people at Hope. We love people that are checking things out and asking those questions. But all of us have this in common. We long for that kind of life. The problem is, <laughs> that's the picture that Jesus paints for us. But if we're honest with ourselves, which is a good thing to do when you're in church, <laughs> is to be honest, that's not our daily experience, is it? There is a life that seems to be driven by the Holy Spirit, powered by the Holy Spirit as our vision statement as a church. Do you know we have a vision as a church? And the first line is this, that we are powered by the Holy Spirit. But if we're honest, life doesn't feel like that. That seems like a stretch. It leaves something to be desired. That kind of life, well, it feels elusive. It does feel elusive. And here's how I know that, right? Because we all have an answer to the question, what do you want? Now, I understand this morning that some of us want Taylor Swift tickets, Uh, right? I understand. But we also have these deeper longings. I, I know that's what it means to be human these days. And I know, based on my experience in this life, and so many of you that I've gotten to know over the years being in ministry here at Hope, uh, it's just the human experience, right? We do have things that we long for, and it feels harder than ever, Sometimes to navigate these waters and to be able to get those things or to connect with God in a way where we feel like we can begin to live the promises of God, right? Where we can taste the fruit of his Holy Spirit at work in our lives. And so we love to say every time we get together as a church that it's no accident that you're here. We do believe that this morning, that God has drawn you, whether you're in the room, whether you're in another campus or a local site, you're watching online. We love that God is doing something. But what I also want us to understand today is it's no accident maybe that you're exhausted, it's no accident that you're frustrated, that you feel disconnected from God. Maybe, maybe it's been really hard for you to get back moving the direction that you want to go. And so I want to begin a little bit here with some time as well, just to acknowledge the fact that a lot has changed. A lot has changed in our world, the way we relate to one another, the way that we do life, the way we get access to things. And it has not been easy we have been through so different, uh, so many different things. And one of the things that struck me this week was listening to a podcast. John Maxwell is a leadership guru. Uh, he has worked with thousands of leaders. He was talking a little bit about public speaking as well. He teaches leadership development. He was a pastor for years. Uh, and one of the things in uh, this podcast that he talked about, they asked him, how have people changed? How has leadership changed in the last few years? And this is what he said after working with thousands of people. He said, people are more insecure than they've ever been. Right? And, and I would say my con- experience is consistent with that. People are more hesitant to jump in to try new things than they've ever been. They're more questioning. They're more oriented around their own agenda than they ever have been before. And that's because we've been through things like a pandemic, right? That's because we've experienced and, and we still don't know what to do with social media. We, we don't even understand the effects that having these little devices in our pocket, what, what it's actually doing to us. But as a dad and as a husband and as a man in this world, I can tell you it's affecting everything from the ways, right, that our kids are experiencing the school bus, right, to the ways that we find meaningful relationships and what occupies our time, the way that we rest, the way that we take care of ourselves. All of it has been molded and shaped and it's different than it used to be. 
And one of the effects of this, and you don't need a pastor to stand on stage and tell you this, is we are more exhausted, we are more burned out, we are more overwhelmed than we have ever been. And some of it is just the way that we do life. We got to take a moment here and say, if we long for the fruit of the Spirit and we're not experiencing it, well, then what, what are we experiencing? And let's take a look at that. In fact, in Galatians chapter 5, Paul also names this list. Uh, it talks about the fruit of when we get our own way. And I love reading the NLT. We just heard it uh, really uh, beautifully read. But I love sometimes putting familiar scriptures in the message paraphrase. So Eugene Peterson translated this. He's a scholar. He understands the languages better than I ever will. And he kind of summed up his understanding and what, what this would have sounded like back in the day. And, and now in our vernacular today, this is what happens. And this is what he says when we get our own way. It's obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time, right? And that's part of what it means for us as Americans. We love to get our own way. And this is, this is the fruit of the decisions that we've made these days. And see if any of these resonate with you. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, holy smokes, right? Frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness, trinket gods, one of the things that I know about us as humans is we have been created to worship. Man, it's not just something you wake up and you decide to do on Sunday. You're, you choose to spend your time the way that you do because you believe that it's going to bring you life. And that, that transaction, that experience, it, it is a worshipful thing. And it's incredible, right, when we gather, whether it's online, through a computer screen, or here in the room to be together with God's people, to, to soak up His glory. But if we don't do that... We're going to find other ways to get those needs met. We're going to go all over the place. And maybe for some of us, it's a sports team. I know some of you, you get way into your sports and you are not happy, right? If you get disconnected from that or they lose. Okay, we love to go to relationships. We love to go to things that are in bottles. We love to go all sorts of different ways, trying to figure it out. They don't satisfy and that's what Paul's talking about here, right? If we go our own way, we're going to end up worshiping and spending our time and energy on things that aren't going to come through for us. They're going to be trinket gods. But this list goes on, and i got to warn you, it is long. Magic show religion, paranoid loneliness. If only, right, we knew anybody that had felt lonely these last few years. Listen to this one, cutthroat competition. All-consuming yet never satisfied wants. How many times do we go to our smartphones and flip open some app? We don't even know what we're doing. But we're just trying to occupy time because there's some itch inside of our soul that needs meeting. And we just kind of have been conditioned and programmed to go to, to a whole bunch of different places to figure out what that looks like. A brutal temper. I could just camp right here. Right? What is it about us today where we are so quick to grow impatient and lose our tempers? An impotence to love or be loved. Whew. See if this one resonates with you. Divided homes, divided lives, small-minded and lopsided pursuits. Listen to this. The vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival. <laughs> right, John? If only the Bible were relevant if to only. us today. If only. If only. Think about this one, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions. I mean, we have whole ministries at this church just for that one alone. Ugly parodies of community. We show up, but we aren't really known. And this is what annoys me in this list is the next few words there. Paul says, I could go on. I could go on and on and on and on. And I'm guessing if you're here today, one of those on that list, it resonates with you. You just go, oh man, that's a little too close to home, right? I have tasted that and I do not like it. And if you're here this morning and nothing on that list resonates with you, if you've never been tempted in any of those ways, you've never tasted any of those ways, you've never given in to any of those ways, then I just want you to know as your pastor today, denial ain't just a river in Egypt, okay? Uh. I just want you to know, thank you, that dad joke was for free. Was for free. And so is this, this question. I, I think we got to ask this question. If we say we want a spirit-filled life, if we want God's best for our lives, and I know you're here, you tuned in this morning because this is what you want, we have to ask the question, where has it gotten us? What does the fruit say about the choices that we've made? And maybe more importantly today, where, where has your way gotten you? See, here's what happens. We love our freedom, and yet at times it does not satisfy 
the choices that we make. And so eventually we hit the wall. We're driven to this point. Even the Apostle Paul experienced this as he thought about the choices that he made in the book of Romans. What a miserable person I am, he says. And then he asks this question, right? He says, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? In other words, with brokenness, right? He knows, he understands the stuff that I want to do. Why don't I do those things? And the stuff that I don't want to do, why is it that I find myself doing this, right? He's having a hard time on himself because he's done this thing that all of us do. Eventually, we hit the wall when life quits working. And sometimes we ask this big question sometimes, and there are dozens, if not hundreds, of people who have walked in this church with this very question. Right? And it's, it's not even something that's on our minds, but it's an ache in our soul. Isn't there more to life than this? Right? And maybe you've been following Jesus for a long time. You've been trying to be intentional with that. And maybe this is the question. You know you've hit the wall. <sighs> I've tried everything. I, th- I thought that I would be further. I thought I would be over this problem. I thought that I would understand God more. I thought I would hear his voice more clearly. Whatever it is, right? We are wired in such a way we love to go our own ways. I mean, even Isaiah talks about this. All of us, like sheep, go astray. And even despite our best efforts, we hit this wall, which is something that I know a a lot about. Now, John and I got to go uh, independently of each other, but we both got to go on sabbatical this summer. And I had a couple months to to grow and to rest, to renew, to recharge, to fuel up. Like, we're really excited about a lot of the stuff happening at Hope, including at our campuses. And so this was a gift to be able to have this time. And we're honored and it's a privilege to be able to do it. One of the things I got to do was travel with my wife. I got to travel with my wife and kids as well on some different excursions. And my wife and I found ourselves on a hike on a tropical island. It's called Madeira. And it was amazing. They call it the Hawaii of Europe. And it was, it was incredible. It was, it was a little more lush than Iowa. I just got to tell you that. A little, little less flat. And we went on this hike and we were having an incredible adventure. In fact, we had to rent this little taxi and drive up. And we got in the taxi at at sea level. And by the time we got to the trailhead, we were 5,000 feet elevation. That's how steep. In 20 minutes, that's that's how rugged this mountain is. And it was awesome. And we're hiking. We're taking the views. We're saying, man, this is breathtaking. This is beautiful. I can't, God, thank you for this opportunity. And one of the things I loved about this trail is that it didn't go around all these peaks. We were hiking to the highest point on the whole island. And, and it didn't go around all the mountains to get there. You just, you went through them. I don't know who these folks were that carved these tunnels this high on these mountains. But it, they were awesome. And we're going through. And I was loving every minute of it until in the midst of one of these tunnels... I ran into the wall, but it wasn't a wall that went from ceiling to floor. It was a a wall that went from ceiling to like right about here on my head. It's dark. It's six in the morning because we got up to go see the sunrise because, you know, you only live once. And I'm trucking. And and I never realized my wife is exactly like two inches shorter than me. But she was trucking, man, because we wanted to get there. We wanted to see the view. And she skated by just fine. Me, well, I ended up bleeding all over the place. Cut my head, couldn't stop, and it got to the point. I was pretty terrified for about a whole minute or two, and I was just getting ready to take off my sock because I had not. I mean, we sent the first aid kit with the home, uh, home with the kids. Like, why would the adults need gauze and bandages? Right? I needed something to stop the bleeding because it's running down my face, and I could not believe how many people walked by and just looked at me and just kept walking, or they didn't even look at me. They just pretended like I wasn't there. I'm like, well, this is going to come back in a sermon about the prodigal, not the prodigal <laughs> son, but the, the good Samaritan. <laughs> And eventually somebody handed me gauze. And I got to tell you guys, I felt a little self-conscious walking down the mountain. (laughs) After a couple minutes, it set in. And I decided to take a picture in front of the tunnel. And I felt like an idiot. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being an incredible day. I mean, I wasn't going to let something like that stop. But you would not believe the looks from the people coming up. I mean, there were warning signs on this and there was a lot of different things. And you could just tell, like I'd turn around, you'd just see people chattering behind me. They didn't, they didn't want to actually talk to me. They just wanted to talk about me because I looked, I looked like a person in need. And that day I felt it, but I wanted to put this not so you could just enjoy my pain and that's part of it, but I wonder how many of us are walking around, emotionally speaking, looking something like this on the inside. Because here's what I know about humans. We are incredibly gifted at deceiving ourselves. We have made some choices in this life where we said, you know what, God, I love your way, but I'm going to go over here. And we can distract ourselves. This world would love to keep us busy and moving forward and never feeling the effects 
of us hitting the wall. Let me ask you today, what do you do when your way quits working? What do you do? Where do you turn? Do you go to yourself? Do you go to YouTube? Do you go to some substance to medicate and get distracted? Where do you go when you hit the wall? Where do you go when you hit the wall? And that's the very question that Paul is addressing in our reading today in Galatians chapter 5. And I, I think for all of us, just so you know, when you've hit the wall, spiritually, emotionally, maybe physically, when you've come to the end of yourself and you go, I don't know how to get through what I'm, I don't know how to be the type of person God's called me to be. There is hope. There is absolutely, absolutely. hope, but it is not through your striving. And this is what Paul is trying to communicate to this collection of churches in Galatia. Paul's not writing to a specific church in a, in a city as some of the other letters, but Galatia is a region. And so it's confusing as these, some of these false teachings are getting out there. These false gospels are spreading throughout these new believers, and Paul wants to address them. He does it in chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. Paul says, I'll say it again, if you're trying to find favor with God... By being circumcised, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. For if you're trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. Paul spends almost an entire chapter of the book of the Bible talking about circumcision. And if you'd like to know all about circumcision, Andy Dot Hermanson at Hope WD. No, I just get. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> To put it plainly, for hundreds of years, God's people, the Israelites, God's people, the Jewish nation, had put circumcision, and get this, 613 Old Testament laws as the benchmark, as the high jump, that you have to reach that point. And if you can achieve that, if you can obey every single law and check it off your list, then you are standing right before God, and I'll feel better about myself, and that is how I'm going to make it through the wall. That's how I'm going to make life work. And maybe that is for you this morning, too. That, that's how I'm going to make it work. And so this, this uh, way of thinking was spreading throughout the churches, essentially, that if I, just, if I just measure up, then I can stand right before God. If I keep the law perfectly, but everything changed when a man named Jesus came and lived and died and rose again. And Jesus says, I didn't come to abolish the law, I came to fulfill the law. And so now Paul is saying at the beginning of chapter 5, verse 6, Paul says, it's now, it's your faith in Jesus that defines you. It's not your ability to check off the entire list. It's Jesus alone. But instead, the message that was permeating those churches was this, Jesus Plus, you fill in the blank with whatever you think you need to find God's favor. For the Galatians, it was Jesus plus circumcision. It was Jesus plus whatever you think you need to do to stand right before God. And I will tell you this, as Andy described the world that we live in, that we all know too well, if you are lost, if you are looking for direction here today, if you are confused, if you are overwhelmed, man, it feels so enticing to fall into what our world calls legalism. That if I just do all the right, all these human-made rules, if I just do all the right things, I can stand right before God. And legalism is so enticing because it's like, God, just tell me what to do. Just give me the list and I'll do it and I'll feel better about myself. But the problem is with legalism is that you have placed all of your hope in you. And it's an exhausting way to live. What's missing from legalism is Jesus. What's missing is the need for the cross. What's missing is grace. Jesus does not have a checklist for you. He wants a living, breathing, daily relationship with you. Just like the Galatians, we struggle because we want to put our hope in our own power. To which Paul responds, you don't have to stay there. That's the bad news, but here's the good news. There is a much better way. And it starts with tapping in to the source. It reminds me of a story a couple years ago when my kids were a little bit younger. They were playing in the backyard, and they were building a, a sandcastle in our sandbox. You know, if you're going to build a sandcastle, you need a moat around it filled with water. And so what I saw that they were doing is they were running back and forth across the yard. It had rained the night before, just like today, and they were using these little plastic cups and scooping up muddy rainwater 
Like that, that was it. This is the pinnacle of their childhood. And they're picking up these water and picking it up. And one at a time, these little cups about this much trying to fill up their moat. But every single time, it just absorbs into the sand. I'm like, this is a futile attempt to build a moat, children. Do you not know how to build a sandcastle, right? And so without them knowing, trying to be the good dad that I am, I go and I turn on the faucet and I hook up our big hose and I put on the like power wash spray nozzle and I sneak up from behind them without them knowing and I go, hey guys, look, and they turn around and I just go, and I just spray them all over. I think I broke their sandcastle. I just hosed the whole thing down. I sprayed them. They're laughing and giggling and running across the yard. I swing the hose over my shoulder and say, now you have a moat. Thank you. And I tell you that to tell you this. Some of us spend so much of our lives running around frantic, in a hurry, trying to be perfect, and trying to scoop up every little bit of satisfaction that we can find in this world, and it'll never be enough. And we don't realize that our good and perfect Heavenly Father is standing right behind us saying, I am ready and willing to saturate your soul with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Don't miss that this morning. Don't spend your entire Christian adult life never turning on the faucet. This spirit, this presence of God is available to you today. Don't miss it. Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 8 in an earlier book. He says this in Romans 8. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Of all the bad news that we've laid out for you today, there is some really good news, and it's this. If you are here this morning, wherever you're worshiping from, and you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, I want you to know that the same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in you. Jesus is with you. You are not alone. That is the good news, and that's the way forward. That's the better way. This is what Paul is talking about. This is the way to the abundant life. It's not the exhausted life or the overwhelmed life or the, well, I guess we're just up against it, up against the wall, the the helpless life. It is the spirit-filled life, tapping into God's electric power company called the Holy Spirit. And could it be that when we look at that list of love and joy and peace and patience and the list goes on, and you say, I want that. That list is not prescriptive, meaning here's another list of things I need to do to find God's love. That list is descriptive of what it looks like when you turn on the faucet and tap into the source of the Holy Spirit. When we turn God's promises into rules, it is no longer the gospel. It is no longer the good news. And so receive that good news this morning. It's time to tap in to the source. And if we're going to do that, right, if we're going to be those kind of people that get to experience the power of the Holy Spirit in that way, one of the things that we're going to have to do is to be able to guard our hearts and our minds for the temptations that are going to come. One of the temptations is to believe this lie that God doesn't care about you, right? So maybe you're facing some adversity. Maybe something is challenging. Maybe you're just bored out of your mind, and you might be thinking, okay, as I go through all of this, man, yeah, it's just God hasn't answered my prayer the way that I thought he would. He must not care about me. You know what cuts through all of that? is Jesus' final words, some of his final instructions to his disciples. I love what Jesus says in John chapter 14. I mean, as he's sitting around the table with his disciples and he's about ready to go and be crucified and and raised so he can send the Holy Spirit, they're asking, Jesus, where are you going to go? Are we going to be okay, right? What are we going to do? And he says, I will not abandon you as orphans. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. I will not abandon you as orphans. The truth is, and we've already talked about this and we've already sung about this today, Right, that we are God's children. We are his sons and daughters who have the power to be provided for and taken care of by a dad that loves us more than we will ever understand. It's so easy to believe that in the moments when God has delivered us, right? When he has provided and we feel that. Maybe coming out of a church service and we've just read something really incredible in the Bible. It's easy to believe that in the easy times. But what about the hard ones? One of the things I think we also have to understand is this relationship that God desires with us. If we want to live the Spirit-filled life, we have to understand where that comes from. I love what Jesus says a little later on in that conversation with his disciples, John 15. He says this, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, everybody say remain. Remain. 
Everybody who remains in me and I in them will produce much fruit. And then he goes on to say one of the most offensive things I think you can say to any, uh, anybody living today, any American certainly living in a country where we're called to be increasingly independent all the time. He says, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, Jesus says, you can't do this life on your own. We feel that, right? We feel the effects but there's something inside of us that continues to want to go our own way. And as we live in that tension, one of the things that we experience is a whole bunch of noise. A whole bunch of noise. Noise around us. If you've ever been in like a major city and you've experienced the transportation, you got the horns and you got the sirens and you got the New Yorkers yelling at one another and all the things going on, the jackhammers and the construction, all those things, right? Noise is everywhere. But the noise also lives inside of us. Right? Well, maybe it's just me this morning, but there's something about when I first wake up in the morning where the things that I haven't done, the things that need to be figured out, the things that cause me stress are the first things to fill my head in the morning. And that noise, it begins to drain me if I don't do something with it. And the good news for us today is that God hasn't abandoned us as orphans. He, he sent his Holy Spirit because he loves us. And that Holy Spirit has the power to offer us something different. I think about when I'm in a noisy city and you're just overwhelmed by all the stimulation, all the noise around you. You know what's incredible? Is to jump into a taxi or an Uber or a car and shut the door. It's amazing to me how quickly all of the outside world just dissipates when you step into a new environment. I think this is exactly what Jesus is offering us. I mean, John 15, one of the words, the ways you can translate remain is to reside. I think the invitation for us to live a spirit-filled life is to reside with Jesus. I think that he's inviting us to jump in the car with him, right? And cue the song, Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, that's, that's okay. I'm telling you. That was it, terrible. Yeah, that was terrible. Thank you. We'll work on that for next service. Right, it's, it's a catchy tune. It gets stuck in my head. It certainly did when it first came out. You know what it is? It's an incredible prayer if you want to reside in Jesus Christ. If you want to shut out the noise in your head or in this world around you and focus on how loved you are and how secure you are in his love, then you can, you can do that in, in a whole bunch of different ways. Sometimes I worry that we make this so complicated to connect with the Holy Spirit. We have to do all these things. We have to sound really smart or we do have to raise our hands and worship whatever it is and make no mistake about it, the Holy Spirit is for everybody. And so is this promise in Jeremiah 17. Here's what's at stake. Here's the promise if we're willing to allow ourselves, right, to be the branches and for him to be the vine. This is what, uh, this is what Jeremiah says in chapter 17. He says, blessed are those who trust in the Lord who have made the Lord their hope and their confidence. That's what it means to reside with him, to make him your hope and your confidence. He says they're like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that go deep into the water. Right? They're not easily shaken. In fact, he's going to go on to say such trees are not bothered by the heat. They're not bothered by the, the forces coming at them, the external circumstances that are crushing them or crushing us. He says they're also not worried about the long months of drought when, when we go seasons where we don't get what we need. And maybe it is a hug from God, just a reminder that we're not alone. Maybe it's financial provision. Maybe it's just for some relationship, right? For, for something to be healed in our lives. It says these trees are not worried about long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. This is what happens when we put our roots in Him. And I love this text. I come back to it over and over and over again because... I think this is one of the other misconceptions about the Holy Spirit that we need to understand in lives. We feel like, man, life hasn't gotten much easier. I must not be connected to the Holy Spirit. I must not be living the, the Spirit-driven life. But I, I want to clarify, I don't think Jesus said anything about the easy life for us. I think when I read about the Holy Spirit, I mean, the heat and the drought, they still come, right? But, but we are invited to an empowered life. We're not alone in it. We get to be with Him as I think about this whole idea of an easy life and an empowered life and which one God calls us to, I think 
uh, about Steve. I think about Mr. Britt. He's a junior high band teacher in the Dallas Center Grimes School District. And you know you are called and gifted in the Holy Spirit when you can direct dozens, if not hundreds, of middle school and junior high kids with instruments, weapons of noise in their hands, right? <laughs> He's an incredible dude, and he is rooted in God's grace because he never stops smiling. I love this guy. From the moment I met him, he has always been a light to me and an encouragement. He is somebody who will lift your soul. But this winter and spring, it turned out, he found himself in a season of medical trauma and a medical difficulty. And it started out with an ulcer and some medical issues, and it ended with him being septic and fighting for his life in a hospital bed just down the road from this West Des Moines campus. And I went to visit him, and he did not look good. In fact, it got really serious, and we were trying to figure out, you know, God, what are, what are we doing here? How do we get to this place? And, and I started to worry about him, if I'm honest. Prayed hard, got other people praying. Steve, he didn't hardly budge. He had a smile on his face. Sure, there was a grimace every once in a while, and there was some honest talk and conversation, and he had his moments with God. But he got through it. I mean, he was on the edge of death in a hospital bed. And he still found, as I talked to him this week, he's made an incredible recovery. I mean, make no mistake about it, his life has changed. And it's harder than it used to be. But he can still speak with this kind of faith. And where does this come from? I believe no matter what you're going through, God is good. This is a guy that was pushed to the brink, right? He says, it stinks, all these things we have to go through, but you are not alone. I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but I was confident that God did. And listen to what he says about the Holy Spirit. When you have the joy and hope of the Holy Spirit inside of you, it surpasses the worry. You can acknowledge both. Why? Because he is with us. He has not abandoned us. Last time I checked, and you can cross-check me on this, John, <laughs> I don't think Jesus said a lot about life being easy. Yeah. But I think he had a whole lot to say about it being abundant. And how is that possible? Well, it's because we get to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are not alone. We're not alone. And we want to leave you this morning, not just with some things to do, but how to do them. Some really practical ways of experiencing the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. And these aren't more things to add to your to-do list. That would defeat the point of the message today. Think about these couple tools as ways of turning on the faucet or ways of tapping in to God's electric power company of the Holy Spirit. And the first one is this. It's surrender. Everybody say surrender. Surrender. I know. You're really excited to say. I'm sure you wake up every morning and say, I am so ready to die to myself today. Surrender to God's will. No, we, we don't like that. We're rugged individualists in that. But this is what God calls us to. Paul puts it this way in chapter 5, verse 17 here in Galatians. Paul says, the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of this, what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting against each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Do you know that every single day there is a battle that is raging inside of you? Between the old self, the old person, our fleshly nature, and the new self, which is living in God's spirit. You are at war. We are in a battle, every single one of us. And here's the thing. A daily battle requires daily dependence. We need Jesus every single day. But here's the reality. Some of, I was thinking about it. Some of us, we want a we wanna Costco kind of faith. You know what I'm saying? We want to load up. We want to come to church, and I'll, I'll come to worship when it's convenient, and I'll, maybe every other month or so I'll come, and I'll have this mountaintop, spirit-filled experience, and I'll load up, get all fired up in my faith. I mean, I'll get, I want Jesus in bulk. The problem is, Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. Jesus is our daily bread. It's not something we do once in a while. We pull Jesus off the shelf when we need him. We are desperate for him. We need to be surrendered, dependent on him every single day. And nobody gets this better than kids, especially the thousands of kids that experience VBS at all of our campuses over these last couple weeks. One of my favorite things about VBS is watching kids come in. Now, I don't know if you were around for VBS. If you were, that's awesome. But you don't walk into VBS if you are a small child. You leap, you bound, you bounce, you run into Vacation Bible School. And you see these kids coming in for worship. They run down these ailes and they come. Well, I, just show you. So they come in 
Sorry, camera folks. You come in and you run down the aisle and you come. I don't, they don't even know where their seat is yet, but they just come running in. And the very first thing that they do is go, whoa, hands up. Like, I'm here. Whoa, yeah, whoa. I didn't see any of you do that on your way in this morning. Just saying. That's a big step. The very first, the most natural thing that they do is surrender. And I don't know if you've ever been looking around during worship and there's like some of these really weird Christians, clearly not Lutherans, very weird Christians. And they have their hands up and you're like, is there a touchdown? Are you airing it out? Like, what do you do? (laughs) Could it be that's not a declaration of independence? It's a declaration of dependence. You don't have to teach small children to say, Daddy, up. Mama, up. What are they saying? I can't do it alone. I need help. And somewhere along the line, of, as adults, we move from this to this. I hope the sermon's okay. I hope they do the songs that I like. Instead, all I saw during the VBS week was this, of saying, I need you, I'm surrendered, I'm here, I'm fully present. And do you know that the reason that you got up this morning, that we have breath in our lungs, is because the God that created you gave you that. It's a gift. We are utterly dependent on him. We are called to be surrendered. That's how we fight our battles. That's how we survive. That's how you find the good life. That's how you find the way of Jesus. It's not the exhausted life or the helpless life. That is the life that Jesus offers every single one of us. Two ways to do that. Spend time in God's word daily. Listening for God's voice. Spend time in prayer. Letting him remind you of who you are. Take time to surrender. Everybody say surrender. Surrender. The second tool we want to leave you with today is rhythm. Everybody say rhythm. Rhythm. And I say rhythm because here's the reality. It is really hard to receive when you're in a rush. It is really hard to love when you're in a hurry. Love has a speed, and it's slower than we are. And the same could be true of kindness and gentleness and finding peace. This is Jesus' offer to us today. Practice the pause. Yes, a weekly Sabbath where it's a gift from God, but what if you practiced the pause? What if you practice the idea that wherever you're at and whatever you're doing, the same Holy Spirit, that same power that you're experiencing right now is available to you as well? During Vacation Bible School, my wife's one of our song leaders, and once in a while, I'm up front and I'm talking and I'm speaking, and I I know, once in a while I get long-winded and I'll feel a pinch in my shirt and she just gradually pulls me back like that. And sometimes I forget when I'm supposed to go up and I'll feel a hand in the small of my back and it's like, now, now it's time to go, pushing you forward. Sometimes we think to experience the Holy Spirit has got to be this big, loud, crazy thing. Sometimes the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives is God putting his hand in the small of our back saying, now, slow down. You don't need that applause. I want you to listen to my voice. Now go to that meeting. Now speak to that person about your faith. Now have that conversation with your teenage child. And we can experience that. Practice the pause. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, maybe it's just taking 30 seconds and saying, Jesus, I acknowledge that your spirit is with me right here, right now. Jesus, I give everyone and everything to you in this moment. Help me come back to center. And you can do that when you're headed into that tough meeting at work. You can do that when you're on the bleachers at the basketball game. You can do that while you're driving your kids to soccer practice. You can do that right in the middle of an argument with your spouse. You can do that when you're alone and you're feeling so lonely and you're lost in your depression. Practice the pause and know that that same spirit is with you. Pause and realize that God is there and the Holy Spirit is not here, I'm going to lay some more burdens on you. It is God's arm around you this morning, closer than you know, saying you can stop being a perfectionist and trying to do all these things for me, and let's just live life together. Be with me. Stay connected to me. Wherever you go, that same Holy Spirit is with you. 
And we want to leave you with this morning is that this, the goal of this is not so that you can just have this great life and not worry about anybody else. The goal of the end of this passage is so that you would produce fruit for the kingdom of God that you would turn outwards and say, I've been blessed to be a blessing. I've been changed and the Holy Spirit is pouring into my life so much that I'm gonna naturally overflow on other people. The reason that we exist as a church is because we are utterly dependent on the Holy Spirit. We're just not that good. We trip over ourselves all the time. It's never been about hope and it's always been about the kingdom of God, amen? So whatever we do, Thousands of kids at VBS sending missionaries across the world. As you go into your homes and schools and workplaces, wherever you go, the Spirit goes with you. Tens and thousands and hundreds of thousands of lives transformed over these last 30 years. People that struggle with brokenness and addiction, feeling the freedom that comes in Jesus. All of that is possible. Marriages restored. All of that is possible people experiencing the love of Jesus in a deep and profound way, people walking out of funerals deeply saddened and yet carrying the hope of the resurrection. None of that is possible unless the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, is as real as real gets. Amen? And that spirit is calling you up out of your seat, off the bleachers, and into the game to join the mission of God this morning. People ask, what is the it factor? What is the it factor? It is the spirit of God living in through every single one of us. And so make that your prayer this morning. Wherever you're at, wherever you're worshiping with us, Jesus, fill me right here, right now with the presence of your Holy Spirit. Fill me to overflowing so that I can produce fruit and join your mission in the world. Right here, right now. Amen? Amen. And we can do that today through Holy Communion. So that's what we're going to do. I want to turn it over to the campus pastors. And if you're sticking with us here in West Des Moines or watching online, I want to invite you to stand as we do that. We fill our cups and our bellies with God's love. Jesus knew we'd need reminders of his presence, that we would need to be fueled for this mission that he's got us on to be a part of this family and redeem the world in us and through us. And so I got to believe it's for that reason on the night in which he's betrayed our Lord Jesus, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. He said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Whenever you do so, do so in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave them to drink. He said, this cup is a new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins for you and for all people. Whenever you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. One of the other ways that we're filled up and connect with the Spirit is through prayer. And let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite our communion assistants to go ahead and come forward. As you come forward today, ushers will dismiss you. You're invited to come and receive uh, a piece of bread. You can enjoy that uh, in the moment. You can also uh, reach and grab a dark colored glass of wine or uh, light colored grape juice. And you can dispose of that cup at your station. Allergy free elements are available to my right and to my left out in the corners of the worship center. Children are welcome to come forward a blessing. Final thing today, you might be sitting here asking, is this meal for me? Do I get to be a part of this? Do I get to experience the Holy Spirit in this way? If you believe Jesus Christ to be the hope that we have, the Savior of the world, then this meal is for you. All is prepared. Come and eat.
God's love tastes pretty good, amen? Amen, and that's not just the bread and the wine. That is the complete and utter forgiveness of all of your sins. That is the old being gone and the new has come through the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. If God's stirring something in your heart this morning and you need prayer, we'll have prayer partners over here to the right and the left on the wings. Come on up. No matter what's going on in your life, we'd love to pray for you. And as you head out today, receive this blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ may strengthen you. May he keep you in his grace. May he give you everything you need to live this life for him. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.